But after getting the revelation of the word of God, we do understand that there is only one God. Even though this God manifests himself in three dispensational offices. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now the offices are not gods. God told the children of Israel. That I hear you, O Israel. The Lord our God is one God. And that's the reason why even the Jewish people... Even though they rejected Jesus, they cannot accept the doctrine of Trinity. It's not in the Bible, but it was started in 325 at the Nicene Council. You can check that in the history. Don't close your eyes and say, no, I don't want to find that out. This is the time when you've got to open your eyes and find out this. That's the reason why we baptize people in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes I wonder when I hear bishops and clergymen saying, I'm praying in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My brother just reflect Colossians 3.17. You see what the scripture says there. So now I want you to understand this. God does not hear that kind of prayer. Because there is no scripture that tells us to pray in titles, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But we have the scripture, the absolute, that says this. And whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. In whatsoever you do, in word or in deed. That's the reason why when we are casting out demons, we don't go saying we are casting you out in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. And the devil will look at you and say, so what is that name? Whatever we do in deed or in word, we do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you did not know, the scripture tells us that God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name. That are the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow down and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Then I begin to wonder, which kind of a God is this who will give somebody else a name that is above his name? The scripture also tells us there is no salvation in anyone else or in any other name but Jesus Christ. Praise God. Oh, yes. There was a time Bra Branham went somewhere and there was this woman. She had the demonic powers that she could speak to a table and the table could lift itself up without anybody seeing who is lifting up but it's demon power. And bottles of liquor on that, bo- on that table and the guitar moving by itself around the table and the table is suspended and the guitar playing by itself. Oh, yes. <laughs> so now, you know, it's, it would challenge people. Can anybody come and pull this table down? We are two men who went to one hell, the other side, and they tried to pull it down. They just were swung the other side and fell off. Now, when Branham came, he said, I'm, I hear that you are a preacher. Now, I want you to pull this table. said, I have no power to do it. But he said, but I have a God who can pull it down. And he said, in the name of the Holy Catholic Church, may the table fall. Nothing. You see that? Because that's a dead name. 
He said, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, may the table come down. Nothing. You see that? But when he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, my brother, everything came down in pieces. Why? There is power in that name. Praise God. So now, God in his mind. You see, we, I want you to understand this. We were in God before there was anything. Now, you are not him in, in him in body form, but you were in his mind before there was anything. Now, your coming is just a manifestation of the thinking or the thought of God. But you see, God, from his no beginning, he had all information about any one of us. There is nothing you are going through that the Lord doesn't know of. He knows everything, and we can teach him anything. So when God, he was condescending, when he stepped into time, he began his creation work. And begin to create. <laughs> you know, uh, the seven day Adventist people, they say, well, you know, God was very exhausted after creating the heavens and the earth, and he's made his body, his back was cranky. You know, I'm just trying to amplify. You know, and the God needed some rest. So, you know, that's why we go to church on the Sabbath. Well, that's not the rest God was talking about. Because God, coming from his no beginning, after creation, he goes back into his no beginning. That's the rest. Eternity. You cease from all this stuff, drinking and all that. You are now with God. Amen. Amen. So now begin to create and all that. And uh, on the sixth day, God created man. And he told man, I want you to, uh, you, this is your center, the Garden of Eden. And all that. And, uh, you know, the angels had been created and all that. So uh, what I want you to see here is that uh, so God puts man in the Garden of Eden. And uh, I want you to understand this, that uh, Eden is a place of dominion or authority with God. And you hear Brabram saying over and over, we are going back to Eden, which is actually a place of dominion or authority with God. It's not a geographical location, but God is just taking us back because that's what redemption is all about. Remember, redemption has two parts. One, God is calling you out, is out, and to enter into. Amen? And also redemption, it simply means you are being brought back to the place you were before you fell. Amen? Praise God. That's what redemption is. It is like if this thing was over here uh, uh, and it is here, redemption is bringing it back to the place that it was. So we do understand this, that uh, Adam fell. Now, God did not set Adam to fall, but Adam fell. You know the story. I'm not going into the detail of that. But you see, when he fell, he forfeited uh, his inheritance, and everything went to the devil. You see that? But not the title did. The title deed of the land went back to the original owner, who is God. So you see, Adam crossed from eternity into time, and he was trying to redeem his wife. However, God's law enables a near kinsman to pay redemption price and to redeem an inheritance that had been forfeited. Amen? 
So now, here is where we have to understand the importance of the virgin birth. Very important. Why Jesus was to be born the way he was born. Amen. You know, Mary had nothing to do with Jesus. There's no scripture in the Bible where you had Jesus calling Mary my mother because God was his mother and God was his father. Mary had nothing to do with it. God did not use the egg of Mary. But God created everything. Mary was just an incubator. So that where the, the, that cell was laid. That's it. Because if there was a slight mixing, then Jesus would be disqualified to be a kinsman redeemer. You see that? A kinsman must be worthy, prepared of his own free will, and able to meet the prize. Since Adam's seed is born in sin and conceived in iniquity, not one was righteous and qualified to perform the duty of a kinsman. That's the reason why there is none of us who can save the other. The Pope needs salvation. <laughs> The Bishop of Canterbury needs salvation too. Let them not lie to you, I'm Holy Father. It's only God who is Holy Father. Recently you heard the news when the Pope was addressing the bishops. And he was saying, you've got to stop, you know, this sort of stuff you keep doing. And if you don't, don't want to be a celibate or observe celibacy, then get out of the prison. You see, you are talking about that? You had the situation in Pennsylvania where they were covering up stuff, where the priests had been sodomizing young boys and destroying marriages. Do you know, if you go to Vatican, there is no city in the world that has bastards like Vatican. Maybe you didn't know that. God is not there. Now, if, if you are Catholic here, I want you to get saved. Oh, yes, I want you to get saved. It's too late. There is no salvation over there. The Pope can't save you. In fact, he is the Antichrist. So you see, there is nobody holy father. There is only one who is God. Praise God. Now remember this. Remember this just a, a little bit here real quick now. So now going back to heaven, remember sin did not begin on the earth. Sin began in heaven when Satan rose up. And you see, the way he was made up Lucifer, he was so good looking and uh, he was uh, the next in command to God. In charge of a lot of things. The only thing Satan could do was to create. But then now you can imagine him sitting there and seeing the angel come. Or the angels coming and praising our heavenly father. And him looking at himself, how good looking. He said, that should be me. <laughs> that should be me. Don't try to take somebody else's position. It's a barrel of position. That's why the barrel is raging in heavenly places. 
which is the believer's position. The devil wants to dislodge you from your position. The devil wants to dislodge your sister from your position of being a woman and a wife. To put you or to make you be something you are not. That's the reason why you walk around. And for some time I could not understand how I would see women trying to walk like men and like act like men. And you would see also men want to act like women and they talk like women and act like women. Because the devil is removing them from the position of who they are supposed to be. See that? So now, the wars war in heaven. It was not wrestling. It was not uh, uh, physical, really. But it was war of wars, the word. And Satan was defeated. The scripture says in Revelation, and his place was not found over there, which means he's not going back to that position. He lost it, and his place is no longer there. But now, here on earth, when God created the earth, he told Adam, you are going to be an amateur God. You are going to be the God of the earth. Amen. And Adam was really the God of the earth. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Praise God. Now, I want you to understand this. Before the fall, Adam was actually in charge of the earth. He had power to control all things. Trees obeyed him. Animals obeyed him. You see that? Oh, yes. He never had to die. He never had to worry. He never had a headache. He never had any fear. See that? That's how things were in the beginning. The prophet says maybe the wind could blow a little harder and is blowing Eve's hair. And, uh, you know, Adam would say before the fall, the name Eve was given after the fall. You see that? But I just used it for clarity. But anyway, the woman. So now, Adam would say, hey, hey, no, 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 no. Take it easy. <laughs> and the wind, <laughs> the wind would miss it. You see that? You see, like when the when when the second and the last Adam came. You know the reason why I said the second and the last, because people are saying there is a third Adam. But let me tell you, he is the last Adam. There is no other Adam. When he came, remember as we were looking at the scripture. When he sent the disciples to go the other side of the sea, which is the land of the Gennesaret. And the devil wanted to kill all of them. But Jesus was on top of the mountain. And the scripture says on the fourth watch, he came walking on the sea. You see, that gives you just a picture of who Adam was before the fall. You see that? Oh, yes. But then now, so now, here we have God on earth. And we have God in heaven. And of course, God ruled everything anyway. But Adam was just an amateur God. But God ruled everything. So now, Satan has been defeated and cast out. And even there was the angel say, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Because this guy, he has been defeated and is filled with wrath and rage. Where I come from, they say, if you hit a snake in the back, make sure you kill it. Because if, if not, if it finds somebody, it's going to cling on you until you die. So now, you can imagine now, the devil now became homeless. He has nowhere to go. He's a wanderer. So now, the only way is to come up with a second plan real quick. 
to see if he can dislodge Adam from being the God of the earth so he could take over. You see, it's a war of position. So now, but remember, Adam was fortified by the word of God. The prophet of God tells us this. You will never fall until you leave the word. But as long as you are in the word, you cannot, you cannot fall. But once you leave the word, then the devil has a right to punch your face. So stay in the word. So now the enemy had to look for a way of dislodging Adam. And without going into the long story here, so Satan knew he could not deceive Adam. That's why there is no place in the Bible that says Satan deceived Adam. But the Bible says Satan deceived the woman, Eve, in the Garden of Eden. That's the reason why, if you read the Bible, from right there, a woman was stopped from preaching. I know what I've just said, there is a power of statement. Because I know there are very many women who are better preachers than me. Oh, yes. But you see, they're doing something God never told them to do. It is just like you see a man who was once a man says, I'm now John. I was John, I'm now John. You see that? I've seen a bunch of them. Does it make you be a woman when you are, you are born a man? So it makes you a woman because you change your sexes? They haven't tried to make a woman be a man, really. Because a man was actually, <laughs> let me not say that. So right there, and if you read the scripture, I know there are a lot of people that might say, well, you men, you know, you just want to do, you know, and of course men have failed. That's why the women take over their job. Well, I'm old school. I don't believe the sister you should be driving a lorry when your husband is taking care of the children. I don't believe sister you should join military and you tell your husband you take care of the kids until I come back. I'm going to Afghanistan. I'm just old school, so we, we can disagree there. But we are still brothers, isn't it? Huh? We are still we are still brothers and sisters, isn't it? <laughs> oh yes. I don't believe sister you should be a police woman and your husband is the one that is at home and you are out there in the night trying to chase after thieves. I'm just old school. <laughs> there is no woman in the Bible who was a priest. Show me one. A priest. People say, but Deborah, well, she was not a priest. She was a judge. Just like sister, you may want to go to school and become a judge. <laughs> yeah. Jesus chose 12 men to preach the gospel. We had very wonderful women in the ministry of Jesus. You see that? 
even when it comes to, you know, a word deconness. There is no word deconness in the Bible. But we have a decon. Now, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about the modern versions of the Bible that people are trying to write. <laughs> you see, the, the modern versions people are writing is, is like, a, you know, if you read the American version, the diluted version, American version, you know, if you read that, like Luke chapter 18 about the woman who was uh, going to uh, the judge saying, avenge me of my situation, you know, uh, it reaches somewhere, they say, the judge said, this woman is driving me crazy. You see, that's American version. The woman is driving me crazy, so let me just take it. <laughs> you see? Now, uh, there are so many versions that have been changed. There's a lot of things that are there that should not be there. You see that? So, People try to pick on things like, oh, you see, the women who are the first people to preach the message of, of resurrection. Well, read the Bible clearly. What does it say? Thank God for the sisters, too. Thank God for the sisters. They went to the grave. And they found two angels there. And the angels to told them, go tell my disciples that they meet me at Garden. Go tell. So I don't know if you met my wife and you told my wife, go tell your husband, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if my wife should come with the Bible and begin to preach to me. <laughs> go tell my disciples to meet me at such and such a place. <laughs> Read the Bible. People say, well, the Samaritan woman went and preached to the town. Well, read the scripture. The Bible says she gave a testimony. <laughs> Sister, you are allowed to give a testimony. <laughs> you see that? So men is a war of position. Doing things. You see, like right now, suppose I came here with the dress my sister or my sister girl is wearing, what would you think about me? <laughs> eh? What would you think about me? <laughs> sister is still, suppose I came here with your dress. <laughs> <laughs> you would say, what happened? Is this brother, is he in his right mind? But what about when a woman comes here wearing my jeans? It's normal, isn't it? You say it's normal. But to God, it's not. <laughs> no, brother, reflect to me uh, Deuteronomy. Is it 521? <laughs> so, you see, so you see, when we do things over and over, and over and over, re regardless of the facts, we tend to think that everything is all right. Let me check 20. The woman shall not wear garment that pertains to. Say what? You know that scripture. I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong one. It's 20. It's 22. Uh -huh, five, 22, five. 22, five. That's right. It just said the wrong way. Now, this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. Now, they, have you ever seen the Orthodox Jews? I'm not talking about the, the rebels. I'm talking about the Orthodox Jews. Have you ever seen their women wearing pants? No. Why? The woman shall not wear that which pertained unto man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. <laughs> now, you can bring your reasoning. You see that? You can try to say, well, you see these pants are women's pants. Well, show me a woman's, a man's dress. Show me a man's dress. 
And by the way, have you ever studied on the history of clothing? I have. Right from, you, do you know when clothing began? Is there anybody who knows? Is there anybody who knows the first person to dress human being? Is there anybody here who knows? It was God himself. And when God did this, when Adam and Eve fell, they, were, they realized they were naked and they saw this is terrible. So they went somewhere, they began to take fig leaves and begin to make clothes for themselves. When God saw that, he said, rejected. You can't wear those things. God killed animals. <laughs> and he saw clothes for them. They were different. He said, this is the way I want you to dress. Now you can come and talk to me now. If you, if you look at the history of this country, women never used to wear clothes. You would be arrested. But you see, they began uh, 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 around uh, after the First World War. And if you look at the design of women's pants, was a homosexual from, from uh, France. That's the design. It's a pervert. Even some of you where you come from, you would never wear pants and go there. Maybe you could do that in town. Because we have a lot of perverts in town. But in the church, even these things you see people wear, you know, you wonder, is, is, you know, I went to some church somewhere and uh, it was like a fashion show. You know, I'm like, wow, there is nowhere to look. It's not even a skirt. see that? A Holy Spirit, a Holy Filled person, Spirit Filled person will know this thing. I can never put on this thing. You will cover yourself. It's not how much clothes were not meant so that you can uh, maybe put a little something on you and your whole body is exposed. No, they were meant to cover you. After the fall. Well, that was a rather by the way. But what I'm trying to say is this. I'm talking about somebody who loves God and is willing to do the will of the Father. There was a situation somewhere in another church where uh, there was this, uh, you know, very rich person. And this person came into the church. And when she came into the church, heard the gospel and was even baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, you would say, uh, very prosperous woman. This woman was seeing some doctor for some kind of sorts and all that. And uh, there was a man in this church who was praying, God, uh, could you send me a wife? So uh, there was a day when this man fell in love with this woman. So they go to see the doctor, and uh, the, the doctor say, tells this man, can I talk to you a little bit? Uh, you are intending to marry this woman? He said, yes, that's my, my lover. And he said, but uh, do you intend to have children? He says, of course, that's what marriage is for. And the doctor said, but she has no womb. So, rather, you get what I'm saying? 
she has no womb. The daughter didn't get pregnant. But the brother did not understand that. But what the doctor is saying, that this is not a woman. This was a man that changed the sex. That's the one you want to marry? Brother, could you imagine if you are found in that position? And you see, in this country, you say, I have a right to do whatever I want to do. You can go and draw all tattoos in your face everywhere. Well, I don't think if you are a child of God, you should do that. So now, uh, this doctor thought there was something wrong somewhere. And the doctor said, well, I talked to this young man, and I see they are planning to get married and attend the wedding. But that information, this quote-unquote woman did not want the doctor to reveal that information to anybody else. So when they were about to take the vows, the doctor showed up. And that so-called quote-unquote woman panicked and began to sweat. Because she just doesn't know what the do if the doctor will say something. So anyway, she said, can I talk to the pastor in the back? Because you have to understand, when we begin to read the vows, that's not a joke. It's not a joke when you begin to read the vows. <laughs> so now I went to the back there with the pastor and said, uh, actually, I was born a man. But I changed to be a woman. You see, the pastor was uh, a little young. He just did not know what to do. So there was a, an older minister in the church, and the pastor said, can you deal with this situation? So they said, well, the marriage is canceled. There's no, ma no marriage here. You see that? You see what do we do? Because we are turning, changing the things that God created, how he made us. We reach a point where we don't even like ourselves. So we want to paint ev almost everywhere. You are telling God, I don't like my fingernails. I don't like this. I want to see a woman the way she was made by God created by God. I'd like to see things in their original nature. If you look at the nature, you will never see a bull chasing after another bull. I'm sorry, I derailed a little bit, but I'm coming back. You will never see well, You walk around and you see a man pass and another man keep looking and following. Or a woman passing and another woman is looking and following. Is a sodomite demonic spirit from hell that is not trying to change the natural juice of things in the natural. And then you see what we've done? We made the laws to defend those kind of things. That if you speak anything against it, I remember preacher preached in Canada and said the homosexuals, if you don't repent, they're going to hell. He was taken to court and judged and sentenced in prison. You see that? Just because of that, because there is a sodomite law 
that is protecting those things. They say the gay rights. And those people want to come to church and take over the church. And say, we are also believers. We are also filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost of the Bible condemns those kind of things. That lifestyle. And you see people say, you know, God made me this way. God did not make you that way. I'm just a victim. Do you know, I was watching a clip on YouTube where there is this young kid that uh, the parents gave birth to this kid and just left in the woods. And the wild dogs, when they found that child, they begin to raise the child. You see dogs? You call them a slap? Have you ever seen a doctor saying, I want to abort this baby? A dog saying, I want to abort this baby? The dogs raised that child. And that child was walking like a dog on the fence. Ate like a dog. Back like a dog. Did everything like a dog. When they found her, she was almost going to run for kingdom. Just to bring her to be normal, the doctor said, we might not reach her to where a normal human being should be. So what does that tell us? Now, the behavioral psychologist, they will tell you, behavior is a lie. She learned those things. She was not born that way. And well, let me go with you. You are born that way. Okay. Let me get... Let me go with you up to that far. Okay, that's why the Bible says you must be born again. <laughs> and when you're born again by God, you will never go to do such kind of ungodly things. That's the reason why the fires of Sodom uh, fell down on Sodom and Gomorrah. And let me tell you, if God will leave this generation to go by with the same scene, then God is obligated to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to them. But God is calling you to repent and come. You see what? This demon is, is creeping into the church too. Well, maybe I shouldn't say this, but there was a time when this brother from some country was looking for help and said, you know what? I'm a Christian, married with kids, but I turned to be gay and I don't know how to get out. And I said, brother, you did that? You know how to get out. I said, go kneel down in your church and don't move from that place until God comes and fills you. You can repent. And if, not, if you don't do so, you will never see heaven with that kind of behavior. So now, let's come back on the track here a little bit now. So now the devil was looking for a way to get Adam out of his position. But remember, before the fall, Adam and Eve were on equal basis. So Satan decided the only way he could dislodge Adam is to use his wife. And when the devil, he has never stopped this method, where he comes and he is questioning the wife. Brother, did God really say that you can't touch a woman? Did God really mean this? Did God ma mean the other and all that? So he came to the woman, you know what? There is a lot you don't know. Your husband never told you. 
but I'm happy to help you. Well, there you have the thing. If it was not mangoes or pomegranates or apples that were eaten, if you had nothing to do with all those things. And uh, I know when I say that, the question that you may ask me is, so how were human beings to come into the earth the way Jesus came? Spoken word. You see that? The question have been, has been asked. Why do men have breath? Since I may call them breath. I don't know the right word I may use. You know, why, men, why do men have them? Well, it was to help his wife. If they had stayed in that plan of God to take care of the children. <laughs> so now, uh, you see, everything was mixed up from the beginning when the enemy entered the human race. Everything was completely mixed up. The bloodstream was contaminated. So that's the reason why we needed the man of Genesis chapter 3 that will bruise the serpent's head. And this man, although he, is a, he, he will be keen to us, but he will not come by the way of the fall. Now why is it so? Now remember, the scripture says this in Romans 3.10. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. So our possibility for salvation and eternal life lay in the supernatural birth of a righteous man. Now if you read Psalms 51 verse 5, the Bible says this. Behold, I will sharpen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me in sin how did it become sin because it was not to be that way from the beginning job 14 i think 14 7 it says a man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble Man that is born of a woman, yes, in this condition. Is it there, my brother? 27, go to 7. You can check that, it could be somewhere. It's just, uh, man, that, it's 14 something, just in 14, it's in Job 14. Is, is a few days and full of trouble. So if this be the case, then how was man to be born? You see that? It is by the spoken word. Amen? Adam would speak. And that child would be born. You see that? How does it sound? Yes, that's the scripture. But man, the way. man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. It was not God's intention for you to come here and die. But God knew what would happen. So now, one of his attributes Praise God. So we were not supposed to come in your sex, but by the spoken word. So Jesus alone could redeem Adam's inheritance because he was without sin and was keen to Adam since they share the same father. 
But until you are born again, God is not your father and Jesus is not your brother. Now, if you look at the book of Matthew chapter 4, here you see Satan trying, you see what Satan was trying to do here was to disqualify Jesus from being a kinsman redeemer. So he throws things before him, but he failed. There was no way out that Jesus could follow the devil. Then we see at the cross, Satan tried to, thought if I get him here and kill him, I will have destroyed him. But Satan did not know what would happen. And you can see, since Christ's resurrection, Satan has toiled to deceive Adam's seed to surrender their birthright through unbelief. Repeat, I think my microphone is cutting. And just get uh, tell the young folks there if they come on the table. It's on the table you see the Bible. But anyway, the devil is uh, to So we see the procedure for redemption. You see this, if you read the book of uh, Luke, the book of Ruth, I mean. The book of Ruth, you will see the procedure, how uh, redemption uh, used to work. And I just want to uh, just take a few minutes. I may not go right into the whole procedure, but we can pick up from, uh, from there next time. But uh, I just want you to look at it this way. You see that procedure for redemption under the law of the kinsman redeemer is set in the book of Ruth, which tells us how this man called Elimelech left Israel with his wife, Naomi, and their two sons, Kalion and Marlon, and decided to go to the land of Moab. And it was uh, the time of famine. And if you have to understand this a little bit, just a little background on this again, uh, before we look at the procedure, if we all have some time. Uh, if you look at Ruth chapter 1, you will see that there was famine in the land. And the book of Ruth is in between the book of Judges and the book of First Samuel. And uh, if you have to understand uh, what was happening in the land, You'll have to look at the last verse. Are we there, my brother, to the back? You'll have to look at the, the last verse of the book of uh, uh, Judges, what it says, so you can have at least some understanding of uh, what was happening in the land at that time. The last verse in the book of Judges. Uh, if you can reflect that, that would be good for me so I don't have to uh, open my Bible all that. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, you can just imagine a situation where people feel they have no leader. So, you do your own thing, that brother does his own thing, that sister does his own thing, and everybody's doing his own thing. Could you just imagine such a situation? Because they feel they have no leader. So everybody just do what is right in your own eyes. You see that? There is nobody who can stop somebody else. Don't do that. He says, who are you to talk to me? <laughs> you see that? You are doing your own thing. What, what do you like? As long as it's good for you, you do it. You don't care about anybody else. 
So this was when the judges ruled. Now, and if you look at First Samuel, you can see how the church was. We had Eli, the priest, he was backslidden. We had his sons, they were also backslidden. The scripture says that Eli's sons used to lay with the women that used to come to the temple. You see now the condition, the prevailing condition now. And God sends a man, a prophet, to go and speak to Eli to warn him of these things they're doing. He didn't listen. And we see from 1 Samuel chapter 1, we see this uh, woman Anna coming to the house of Shiloh of God and praying God to do something for her, to give her children. And God gave her child and gave her other children and said, Lord, because you gave me this baby, I'm going to lend this baby to you. Was brought in. And uh, the scripture says, you know, he was uh, doing a whole lot of things in the house of God, opening the doors and everything. But the Bible says, but Samuel did not know the Lord. You see the condition? He is in the house of God. He's serving God, but he doesn't know God. But we see God calling him. And when God calls him, he goes to Eli. He says, you called me. He said, no, I didn't call you, my son. Comes again, you called me. No, I didn't call you. Now, if I was just think about that yesterday, with the brothers who were yesterday for a prayer meeting, and I'm like, you know, and I said this, there are, if you are behind there and you know me, you will know that's Brother Ken's voice. If it's Brother Busunga, you know that's Brother Busunga. If, if it's Brother Joe, you know that's Brother Joe. <laughs> if it's Brother Clone, you know that's Brother Clone. But Samuel says, but you called me. Well, he figured out that God was calling this young man. He said, okay, go sleep. If he comes, say, speak, Lord. There is servant hearing. And he just say, said exactly what he was told to say. And God spoke to him. And it was a message of warning to the house of Eli. When they woke up, Eli put the young man on earth. He said, tell me everything that he told you. And he told him everything. And Eli, instead of saying, you know, I remember the other man of God came and warned me of the sin. I must do something about this situation. But Eli said, well, he is, it is of the Lord, so let him do what he wants to do. There isn't anything really I can do here. He can do whatever he wants to do. Look at that condition. So this condition brought famine in the land. It was both physical and spiritual famine in the land. So we come to the book of Ruth. So the scripture says, it was when the judges ruled, there was famine in the land. And the Limelech and his family left the covenant land and went to dwell in the land of Moab. Remember this. A Jew is never blessed outside the covenant land. And remember you as a Christian, you will never be blessed outside the message of the hour. Why am I calling it the message of the hour? Because we've had messages in days gone by. But this hour, God has spoken to us. He has revealed his word to us. If I come to you and tell you God is going to send rain and the earth is going to overflow, let's make a boat. Well, that was the word of God. 
It is the word of God, but it's already gone. It's already happened. If I come here and say, now, you know what? I'm going to get you to another land. So follow me. I'm like Moses. I don't know how many people will follow me. <laughs> to take you to another land, I tell you the land of promise. Most of you remember this man. I just forgot the, the name. Uh, in, it was in the, in the 60s. Around the way where he got the men, people, men and women, and went to Jonestown in a, uh, was, which country is that? In a, just forgot the name. But anyway, he went there, and so many people followed him. And he killed those people all. He made poison. Well, you are not supposed to go to a natural land. But the land is Jesus Christ that you have to inherit the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So just follow, just, just look at the book of Ruth. Don't follow up from there. Just I'm going to follow a few things from there. So now, you see, they go to the land of Moab. And you know who Moab was? Remember Lot? When he went to a cave somewhere? That's how that family came up. The Amorites and the Moabites. So they go to that land of Moab. I'm not waiting, bro. <laughs> See, I don't want to use my Bible. I want to use the screen where, right over there. So they go there and they dwell there. They were there for 10 years. Reaching them, calamity struck. Elimelech dies. You see? You are not supposed to leave the land of promise. Stay there. Even though there is famine, verse 1, even though there is famine, but just seek the face of God. God will bring bread. Don't go away. Don't walk away. Don't walk away from the house of God. Stay there. Keep praying. Even though it seems that there is no revival, it seems like uh, things are not working well. Just keep praying. God! will bring food. So now, when Elimelech dies, the two boys marries there. And you know, according to the law of Moses, they were not supposed to have done that. But now the father is dead, so they marry there. All pie and rule. It doesn't take long. Before you even have children, the two boys die. So you see now Ruth, when they're full, and has lost almost everything. I know, uh, yeah, now that's right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. That's right. And sometimes you may wonder, why didn't, uh, you know, maybe Naomi die? It's because she types the chat. And in everything, God here is typing. It, it just types. Because now you see, Ruth is of a church. She types a church, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Naomi was to type the Orthodox or the Jewish church. And you see also, Alpa types a church, which is uh, the lukewarm church, the denominational church that doesn't care. You see that? So now, if you look at the scripture, you see they, now the boys are gone. When Naomi was there in the land of Moab, she heard that God had visited his people by giving them bread. We can put it this way. There was now a revival going on. In Israel. And I want you to understand this just real quick here. Just real quick. I want to show you something here. All right. So, uh, just to look at uh, these. Uh, uh, sometimes when we look at these and without looking at uh, the names, uh, you may uh, miss certain things here. 
just a little hand right in here. Now, if you look at fast, if you look at uh, the names here, now, if you look at, uh, now, Bethlehem means house of bread. Amen? Bethel means house. Leche means bread. See that? Now, if you look at uh, the name Judah, go back to verse 1. Judah, it means praise. Praise God. Now, you see they are living Bethlehem, Judah. The house of God. The house of praise. The house of bread. They are living there and they are going to Moab. I think if you read uh, Psalms, I think it's Psalms 138 verse 9, it says Moab is a wash pot. It's like a garbage place. So they're living here, the house of God, and they're going to Moab, a place they shouldn't have gone. Praise God. So this family lived in Bethlehem, Judah, in the house of bread. And praise. My brother, if you can look at 108, Psalms 108, verse 9. Just the first part. Now, now me means pleasant. Moab is my wash pot. That's what God talks about Moab. So you want to go there? It's like a garbage place. See that? Naomi means pleasant. A pleasant person. See that? Pleasant worship. So they leave the place. They leave the land of the covenant. And they go to Moab, the place they were not supposed to go. Always. When a Jew leaves their land, they are in trouble. Recently, the Hamas threw a rocket into Israel. And you see, we had the interceptors. So they turned on the interceptors. And when they turned on the interceptors, the batteries failed. And they knew that that rocket is headed to Tel Aviv, the capital city, of Israel. So now what they could do is just the siren to go. Now everybody run into the bank as there is nothing you can do. The interceptors have failed. But you see, when that missile was just about to land, it changed course and went and dropped into the sea. And the general of Hamas commander said, even their God changes our missile in mid-air and send them changes their direction. That's the God I'm talking about. When they are there, they have come to stay. That's the reason why the Arab world cannot uproot Israel from that land. Most of them have said we're going to chase them and drown them into the sea. Let me tell you this. There is nothing you can do because they're just in prophecy. They're just in prophecy. They're fulfilling prophecy. The prophet says, if you want to know the time we are living in, look at Israel. Modern events be made clear by Bible prophecy. See that? They have tried. Remember the miracle war of 1967. It was the Sabbath day. And on the Sabbath, the Jew will never touch anything. I had a friend of mine going to Israel. He said in the Sabbath, the Jews will hang around the elevator, you know, waiting for a Kehe or a Gentile to come and press the, the button because pressing the button is work to them. So they hang around waiting for a Gentile to come and press the button so they can come in and wait for the Gentile to press it so they can get out. 
So you can see how that. So now the Arab world attacked them during this time, 1967. They thought now at this time we got them because it's a Sabbath. They won't touch the gun. Well, they were praying. And one of the generals says, said, well, even though we are seeking the face of Jehovah, but our fingers are itching to touch the gun to defend themselves. They were attacked from all over. Egypt from the other side, Lebanon, Syria, they were attacked and then the United World they all tried to destroy Israel. But they finally broke the Sabbath and defended themselves. And uh, this war has gone into the history. The historians call it the miracle war. Because how Israel defeated all those nations on all the front, it's still a miracle up to today. And only the historians can say this. There are some supernatural powers that help Israel. And you know what? You are the Israel of God. You are completely armed if you do not know. There is nothing that devil can do. You have to know what God has given you. The prophet of God tells us this. That God has given you the power of prayer. Prayer changes things. You've been given the word. You've been given the Holy Ghost. This is the hour where we can stand and say the devil is under our feet. And if you want to be defeated, you give him power. Well, you will do that, but you see what? I'm not going to give him the power. I want him to stay under our feet. Why? Because Jesus conquered him. He defeated him at the cross of Calvary. He was stripped of every power he ever had at Calvary. Blessed be the name of the living God. He has no more power over the Christian who is in Christ. He lost it all at Calvary. And the Bible says that even death, Jesus conquered it. You don't even have to be afraid of death. Jesus took the stinger from death. He took the keys from Satan. He doesn't have keys now. And then he gave you power, the authority to cast him out. Why don't you use the power? Why don't you use this authority? Praise God. We call it wonder working power. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Where the sick are healed in Jesus' name. The lame walk in Jesus' name. The dead, the dead rise in Jesus' name. You have been given the authority. But you see, most of us are still wondering, are still saying, well, when will Brother Branham come and do this? Well, what will I do? Just stand on the promises of God and tell certain, certain, you've been raised running my house for a long time. I've been sitting there, let you do whatever you want to do, but right now I'm in charge. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, to get out of my house. See that? That's what it is. But we are not doing anything. We just sit there and watch the devil come to the house 
and do whatever he wants to do. It's like the day is raining. We used to have a little saying that used to say, you know, when the cat leaves, the mouse rain. You see, the rats are running in the house. They're saying we are in charge now because the cat is not there. You have let the devil bully you long enough. You can knock down the bully. Remember there was a preacher. Said when I was in school there was a man who used to bully me every day. And I was just so scared of him. He was this huge voice. Just come walk, slap you in the face. And walk as if they didn't do anything. And he tried to avoid him. He would just run after him and kick him. Well, I'm not saying you do that, but it was an, it's an illustration. So what happened was, one day, he said, I've got enough of you. Today, I'm going to stand my ground. Like Florida, you know, they said, you stand your ground. <laughs> I'm going to stand my ground, and I'm going to defend myself when the bully comes. And that bully came as the usual. And this young man stood and waited for him. So the bully came as usual to do what he always does. He found out it was a new day. <laughs> and this young man knocked him and knocked him and the bully fell down. And he was even shocked. So I can knock this guy? I'm talking about the devil. You can knock him. <laughs> That's the bully. He comes, takes your child and goes away. Comes again, takes your husband and goes away. Comes again, takes the other child and goes away. You can knock the bully. You can say enough is enough. And from that time, the bully knew that man is dangerous. He's walking up. I'm not going to move closer now. I just leave him. I go to somebody else. Use the authority Jesus has given you. These are the blessings that are easy in his name. Praise God. Well, I don't think I'll go further than this. But let me end on this. So now me had that God had visited his people in the promised land back at home and said I have to go home. The story of Ruth, the story of this church begins at Bethlehem Judah. And the story of Ruth, Naomi, I'm sorry, I'm confusing that. Naomi begins at Bethlehem Judah and also her story ends at Bethlehem Judah. You came from God. Your story began in heaven. Where were you? You were there. The sto our story began in heaven. And our story will end up in heaven. So Naomi says, I have to go back. But then Naomi, she has these two women to bear with. And says, go back to your people. Go back to your gods. Go back to your people. See that? And watch. Alpa and Ruth, the two of them said, we are not going to leave you. We are going with you. So I want you to see, now we have three churches. These three churches are determined to meet Jesus. You see that? That's why you can't have a man in there. The churches. That's why Naomi couldn't die there. She has to represent to type this. So say, go, my daughters. You see? Go back to your God. Go back to your church. Go back to your people. Why should you follow me? You know how that place is. Nobody will marry you. You know, some people will only come to church if they know they'll get married. 
if, if they know they might not get mad, they won't show up in church. Maybe they will go and mad fast. They say helping themselves. I need to help myself first. Then I can go there because, you know, you might not. You know, no, depend on God. Just depend on God. Sister, depend on God. Brother, depend on God. So she made it so strong that it was enough to repel them. The Bible says, Naomi Ruth Alter. They both wept. The three of them wept. As they, and remember, they are on the road going to Bethlehem, Judah. They are going to Bethlehem, Judah. But Naomi says, why should you follow me? Even if I was to get married tonight and have children, would you wait for them? Live as much as it was in Israel. Well, it came a time when Alta kissed the mother-in-law and walked away. Are you there, both of you? See, kissed and moved away. Don't you like this, some of you? Can you go tell me what the Bible is telling me as well? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So now, you see there? They lifted up their voices and wept again. And Alta kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung unto her. But I thought they said they were going. The three churches were going. Now, we have some people in church that say, I want to be a Christian, and I want to love Jesus, and I'll join the rapture. But when they are told, okay, when you come, remember you won't dress like that. Then they say, oh, if that be the case, I'm not coming. <laughs> you see that now? Why? Because they love that than the Lord Jesus. I remember there was this woman, and uh, I, I'm not picking on women. I'm just trying to illustrate, because you see, uh, a woman represents a church. Types of church. So now, she had a ring on the tongue, a ring right over here, another ring here, another one here, another one here, another one here. <laughs> you see, where they pierce and all that. <laughs> and then there is a color here, you know, different colors. You know, when she opens her eyes and close blinks, you know, and then we have so many, you know, rings. Two here, another one here, another one here, another one here, another one here. And they look so funny. When is not enough? <laughs> and anklets and all that. So there was this woman who was testifying to her and said, but sister, you know, when you come and receive him, I think you are, the things you put on yourself, you have to pull them off. You have to wash your face. He said, oh, if that be the case, I'm not coming. I don't need the Lord. <laughs> you see that? Which means she loves those things more than God. So all believes, and now I need to see, when all believes, do you know she's never mentioned again in the Bible? Check. After that, that's it. She's taken off. But Ruth says, no. Entreat me not to leave you. See that? Or return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And they God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me. And more also, if aught but death part thee and me. You see, made clear cut decision. I've heard what you said. I've heard when I go there, how it is. But I want you to know, you are God. Will you my God? Your people, not my people. I'm not going back to those gods. 
of Kathleen's. And they begin to move. I'm telling you, when they reached Bethlehem, the whole city was moved. They said, is this Mary? She looked at them, and I can imagine. She looked down, and tears began to drop down her cheeks. And said, don't call me Naomi. Don't call me pleasant. Call me Mary. Bitterness. I went out full, but I'm back empty. You see that? But now, Ruth tried to say, you see, God has just done this to me now. It is the choice they made. Remember, choices have consequences. When you make the wrong choice, the times we tell people, do not marry that woman, do not marry that boy. Remember the little kid Brother Ram talked about? The mother was very sick, and this kid came home, and the mother said, Johnny, I was so sick and feeling so bad. I had no time even to prepare anything for you. But there is an orange girl. Just take that orange girl and eat. And that, that young boy got so mad and frowned and got that orange and threw it on the floor, on, on, the, on the wall. So if you marry a boy like that, you are in trouble. You are just in trouble. <laughs> there is this young man who was told by his pastor, this God is not a believer. Don't marry the, believe, the non-believer. Said, well, she told me that she will believe. The pastor says, well, so why doesn't she believe first? Why doesn't she believe first? Then you marry. Why do you want to marry her? Then she can believe later. And refused to listen to his pastor. So left church. Decided he would do things on his own. And got married to the guy. Then came back to church. Said, well, I can confess. <laughs> it didn't take long. After about, you know, not even a year. You know what? That woman said, I can't live with you no more. Left that man. And you know whom she got married to? She left this man and got married to a woman. So could you imagine if somebody asked you, so brother, where is your wife? Are you going to tell her your wife, your wife left you and got married to a woman? Well, just think about that. So he says, Pastor, I now agree with what you are saying. So I want you to help me marry a sister. The pastor told him, no, you married already. You can't marry. Your wife is alive. Go take your wife back. So you see, it is good to listen. It's good to pay attention. She made a clear cut decision. Praise God. That I'm not going back. I'm going with you. And everything you said, I'm ready to live single the rest of my life. But I want to worship your God. I want to go with you. Your people shall be my people. So now he begins to cry and say, see what the Lord has done to me. It's not the Lord, it's the wrong choice. So what I was saying was, when you make a wrong choice, that wrong choice has consequences. Yes, you will repent. God will forgive you. But you see, you will still pay for those things. Have you read the, read the story of David? When David took the wife of Uriah? What God said is, God has said, I've forgiven you. But remember, this will never be your house. I've 
seen a young man die of AIDS when AIDS just arrived. And this young man lived right. And on his deathbed, telling the pastor, pastor, you know what? I never done that before. That was just the first time. Well, don't leave God. He died in that condition. Did God forgive him? Yes, he did. He repented. But there is consequences because there is a law of God. It says you sow something, you reap the same. You say, I'm sorry, God. Yes, God will forgive you. God will forgive you. But you will have caused headache and pain. So it was during the time of a revival when they showed up. And then it was seen now as Boaz coming in the kinsman redeemer. So I just want to end there. So next time we take we pick up from there. Do you love God? Amen. Now, I know there are certain things that will come forward and uh, they, they are a little painful. They are a little, but it's just the word of God. You can take all those things and before you ask me a question, cross-check everything I said in your Bible. And when you find is the truth, believe that with the whole of your heart. Remember, we are going to God and it's God who is the righteous judge. Amen. He's not going to say, well, what did your church do? Did your church take, you know, like there was a pastor who was saying, you know what? You know, when I go to God and they give God this book and the God finds your name is not there, what are you going to say? So I can refuse to write your name in this book, the church book. Well, <laughs> it's God who is writing the name. It's not a man. You have no book to give to God too. God wrote your name before the foundation of the world. So just love God. Praise him. Give him glory. He's a good God. He has redeemed you. Amen. He's the onion who was worthy, musicians. He's the onion who was worthy to redeem you. To redeem you. When I was lost, it's only Jesus who came down to redeem us. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Amen. Praise God. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Amen. I was supposed to go to hell, but Jesus changed everything. He took my place as I took his place. Let's stand up. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed to the
Nossa. just want you to know it is better for us to trust and obey God than just offering sacrifices. We shall pray. Father Lord Jesus we are grateful Father for your word Lord. And Lord Jesus, we can now understand 
while you are hung on the cross. Father, Lord Jesus, in the days of Noah, only eight few made it out of that generation. In the days of Lot, only three people made it out. Lord Jesus, it shows the way is so narrow. It is not the broad way. It is a narrow way. Father, Lord Jesus, as we thank you and honor you, Lord, I pray. And may you help us, Lord Jesus, to embrace this Holy Ghost gospel. Father, we know it is dripping with blood. The blood of the disciples. Father, we see them being killed because of what they were preaching. We see Peter and the disciples being beaten up because of the message they had and told never to preach again in this name. Never to preach again the way they were doing. And Lord Jesus, we know that is the preaching that is from God. Father, Lord Jesus, as we live in this untoward generation, where man-made creeds are being taught as the word of God. But Lord Jesus, we thank you that we have a message from God. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that very few will hear the voice of God. But we know your voice is loud and clear. You are calling from the east, from the north, from the south, from the west. Lord Jesus, they're coming to gather round this fresh kill, oh God. And this is the message that is taking us into the rapture. It is not an ordinary message, but it's fresh from the throne of God. Help us, Lord to receive it and impress it with the whole of our hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, as your spirit, sweet spirit, move. May you feel us, Lord, for we know without your spirit, no man will see you, God. So we need you. Bless us, O oh Lord. Bless your children. Father, Lord Jesus, even as we leave this place, may you bless us, O oh God. Go before us, Lord, and hear our humble cry when we cry out to you. Thank you, Father. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive our sins, Lord. And Lord Jesus Christ, even the things that I've been saying today, let no brother or sister think that brother can hurt people. But Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, is just to tell it out on the mountains, to tell it wherever we go, for everybody should know that Christ is the Lord. Father, we thank you. Bless us and forgive our sins. For we want to be right with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I do pray.